All right, during the last video, which was the uh, shareholders' equity video, I think I said that the next step would be the debt schedule. In fact, it's going to be the cash flow statement because the cash flow statement is going to determine our debt schedule. You know, how how much cash we have at the end of the period will you know let us know if we can pay down or if we need to take more debt. So we need to do the cash flow statement first before we get into the debt schedule. All right, so for the cash flow statement. We are essentially going to um, do a calculation to approximate cash flow. Because we're doing the accrual method, which you learned in the Khan Academy video, um, you know, you start with a net income, but you make some adjustments to that to get back to cash because not all of our expenses are in cash. For example, depreciation here is a non-cash expense. What we did is we said we bought a car last year and we're going to expense that over five years, right? So we have a depreciation expense on that car every year. It's worth $5,000 less, so we're going to put $5,000 in depreciation. But just because it doesn't worth, but just because it's worth less, doesn't mean that it's a cash expense. We didn't actually pay any cash that year because it's worth less. So because of that, net income is actually lower than our cash balance because we subtracted all that stuff out. To adjust for it, we need to add that back in. Same thing with amortization. Uh, for working capital, uh, we need to add back any uh, increases in working capital. Sorry, we need to add back any decreases in working capital because a decrease in working capital means that we need less cash to manage our business day to day. Um, you know, if if uh, if we are doing better at collecting our uh, receivables, that means we are getting more cash in faster. So, um, you know, uh, a, a decrease in working capital means we need less money. Um, to manage our business day to day. So if, if accounts receivables go down, we need less money, we add that back into net, to, uh, the net income to get a cash balance. We do this for all major, uh, if we wanted to get to an actual cash balance, we would do this for all major um, balance sheet line items, but we just want to approximate today. Anyway, so to do this, you know, grab the net income from the income statement, same as we've been doing, just keep going and referencing everything. Reference that. Uh, reference depreciation, we did in the pp &E schedule. Great. Amortization, we did not do. Uh, we don't have any intangible assets that we're amortizing uh, that we modeled in. So we're saying no to that. Um, and we're going to add any decrease in working capital. We calculated that in the working capital schedule. So a decrease is positive here. So I'm going to leave that positive. We're adding that back in. All right, so that's it. We have the, you know, other things we would do is, you know, tax liabilities if we're doing better about deferring our tax payments. Um, and we do have some tax assets and liabilities on the balance sheet. We left them constant, uh, so I don't think those should change much. Maybe the first year it would change. Uh, I, I think we left it constant. But either way, I'm going to leave it just for the mechanics of this. Great. Okay, so we actually generated a lot of cash uh, each year from the operations, and this is increasing fast. Just like, you know, the net, net income and all that other stuff, we will need to go back and make sure our assumptions are right before we believe anything this model says. What we're doing is we're putting the, the roads in, in place so that we can then drive with our assumptions. We're putting, you know, laying the, laying the foundation of this, and then later when we actually put in the right assumptions, we can be pretty confident that we'll have a good model. All right, CapEx is a cash outflow. When we buy that car, you know, to replace the last car, we uh, had a capital expenditure. So... I'm going to add that in from our PP&E schedule, property plan and equipment schedule. And that is uh, the cash after operations and investing is the cash left for financing activities. So now we want to find out how much cash we have, right? Do we need cash or do we want to get rid of some? So our beginning cash is our last period's ending cash balance. We're going to go get $112 million. Um, Carry that over. And now we've added... This much, and we've subtracted this much. We've added the operations, and we've subtracted the expenditures. And then we have this much cash available left for financing. Um, and this we are going to reference back to... This will plug in, actually, automatically. This is why it's circular, right? Because this is referencing our cash balance up here, which we haven't populated yet. When we finish the cash from operations, It'll populate here, which will reference back to the next year's cash balance, and this model starts to become very circular. Um, and that's when you get the integrated three-statement three, three statement model in here. So we're going to leave this blank for now. Uh, now we need to find out what we're doing with this debt 
so we can find out what our ending cash balance is because our ending cash balance is the amount we made from operations, the amount we spent investing in the future of our business, and the amount we financed. We don't know the financing yet because we need to do the debt schedule, which we will do now.